Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor and trainer. Now, in this episode, I am going to show you how to set up your own local run of Compiler Explorer. And this is actually incredibly simple to do, but I thought I'd give it a quick run through because I kind of feel like everyone needs to have their own local environment for Compiler Explorer set up because you never know when you're going to need one and you don't have internet access. So for my regular viewers, you might be interested uh, in this new prompt that I have for Bash here, which is the Bash Powerline a utility that uh, just gives you a pretty thing set up here and shows you what branch you're on and that kind of thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick clone of the Compile Explorer. That's where you start. I'm in Linux, if this wasn't obvious enough. So the first thing that you need to be aware of is that Compiler Explorer is a Node-based project. So you need to have Node.js installed, as it is called on Ubuntu. And you can do that by doing apt install Node.js, which I already have installed, so it's not going to do much here. And you also need to have npm installed which is the node package manager. So with those things installed, you just need to type make. And it's really actually quite that simple. But since it's a node-based project, it relies on, well, lots of projects. So we're going to see that it's going to install all of the dependencies that it needs. And it is quite a few, and, um, but it, it does everything that it needs to do on its own. We just have to wait for a minute or two. And I should also point out that it automatically detected here Haskell, D, and Rust support. So it is not enabling any of those because I don't have them installed. And now it is going through its default configuration and finding a, a few compilers that I happen to have installed. And you'll notice here it says listening on HTTP colon localhost, etc. And since we're running in a terminal here in Linux, all we have to do is mouse over this link and say open link and it'll automatically launch our web browser with the compiler explorer that is running locally in it. So as you can see, everything is up and running here, and we can make a quick test. And we can see that this is working, and we have returned phi from our main. But it only has G++ in the list of compilers. So let's take a quick look at that. So I'm going to open a new tab. And down here in the etc. folder, in the config, we've got our set of default configuration files. And we want to take a look at the c++.defaults. And more to the point, we want to copy it to c++.local.properties, because we want it to pick this up as our local configuration. And the default set of compilers that it has doesn't quite match the set of compilers that I have. So what we're going to do is set up a few compilers that we know that we have on the system. And we're going to take a quick look. I have made a point of installing basically all of the compilers that are available to this version of Ubuntu. So if I type G++ and hit tab, you can see I've got 4.95 and 6. So I can type and save this configuration file. And because we have created a new configuration file, we're going to restart Compiler Explorer here, although it can usually pick up changes to the configuration file automatically. So we can see in the debug logging here that it has found 4.9, 5, and 6. And let's go ahead and add our Clang compilers, which is, let's see, I've got 3.6, 3.7, 3.9, 5, and 6 on here. So that is a good enough start. And if we switch back to our tab, we can see that Compiler Explorer has automatically reloaded the configuration file for us, and it has found these compilers 3.7, 3.9, and 5 also. 
And if we switch back to our Compiler Explorer window and we reload the interface, then we can easily choose one of these six compilers now. So uh, that's it. It's really straightforward. I strongly recommend that you set up your own local compiler explorer if you want to. Now, if you are not a Linux user, you can actually set this up in a VM as small as probably about 512 meg or a gig, depending on what exactly you want to do, and then set up appropriate port forwarding from your VM to your local desktop, and then access it from whatever your local operating system is with no problem. And there all are also some options for running under Windows and Mac OS, but I know that Linux is the best supported and easiest to set up. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.